the left really enjoys hating America. And the interesting thing is, is that it's not just that they don't like America, it's that they evangelically do not like America, right? Like they have to broadcast it to everyone, just let them know how esoteric their views are, how arcane it is that they reside in a country that they cannot stand, which of course warrants the question of why don't they move? And the answer is, of course, that people vote with their feet. And America is the greatest nation ever. And regardless of that fact, clips go viral every now and then of Jeff Daniels destroying America with facts and logic or of a New York Times op-ed that says America's not the best. It's just okay. Wrong. America is the best, you ostentatious fool, and I've got 10 reasons why, so please, do stay tuned. John Doyle in. Heck off, commie. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off Commie. I first want to say that this is not intended to belittle anybody. A lot of the shots I'm taking in other countries, specifically in Europe, they're tongue-in-cheek, just for craps and laughs. You know, the truth is, I really like a lot of other countries. I've been to several other countries, but America's still the best, which is why I still live here. So, these 10 reasons are in no particular order of importance. Let me know in the comments, though, why you know that America is the greatest nation in the history of the world. Other than that, uh, we'll just dive right in. So, number one, America is the best because we have freedom. We have freedom in this country. Under the First Amendment of our Constitution, the government recognizes our God-given rights to freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of the press, freedom of assembly, and freedom to petition the government. Of course, people that live in America take this for granted, and then they go and they travel to Western Europe or Canada, and they're like, wait a minute, they have freedom too. Why do we pretend that America is the only place that has freedom? It's like, because they don't have freedom the way that we do, sweetheart. And if they do, it's much less secure. Canada has no absolute free speech. Their government can regulate speech that is deemed offensive, uh, such as hate speech. In America, hate speech is still protected speech because the price we pay to live in a free society is accepting the risk of being offended. What about in the United Kingdom? They passed a little number about 16 years ago entitled the Communications Act 2003. And under section 127 of that legislation, you are guilty if you send a message to somebody that is perceived to be obscene, grossly offensive, or of menacing character. You can get sentenced to six months for it. You're also guilty if you send someone a message with the intention of annoying them. That means if you set a reminder on your phone for 3.35 p.m. every day so that you can send someone the same picture of based MP5 emoji guy for no other reason than just to mess with them, you can go to jail. That's absurd. And then the question is, okay, well, who gets to decide what's offensive versus what's grossly offensive or what's annoying versus what's persistent? Fellas, in America, if you double text a girl, she's going to think you're desperate. It's a no-go. But in the UK, you might be prosecuted for it. And it's all arbitrary. They arrest thousands of people a year for making these types of comments online. That's not freedom. That is Orwellian. And sure, America's not perfect. We're a lot less free than we used to be. But we also own a ton of guns that can fix that problem if and when we decide. And that's something that the left simply cannot understand. The fact that I can walk into a coffee shop and buy a latte with an AR-15 slung across my chest is epic. It's two schools of thought. Like, the left is like, I can't believe that you can do that in this country. And the right's like, I can't believe you can do that in this country. It's epic. And we take it for granted. And I'm focusing more on personal freedom here, but we'll run it back to talk about economic freedom in a bit. But freedom is defined as the power or right to act, speak, or think as one wants without hindrance or restraint. And you should note that the definition describes either the power or the right to because those are two different things. I have the power to murder somebody, but I don't have the right to. The difference is extremely important because in other countries, you may have the power to speak. You may have the power to exercise freedom of religion. You may have the power to petition the government, but that power is not absolute and it can be taken away from you by your government, unlike a right. In America, you have a right to these freedoms and if your government tries to infringe upon those rights, you've got your kill switch, right? You've got your emergency power off, which is the second amendment and uh, understand that if we didn't have that right cemented in our constitution, we would just be perpetually just crossing our fingers that nothing bad happens. Never mind that historically speaking, something bad always happens. We would just have to be ignorantly optimistic and no one wants that. In fact, uh, we are only one of the three countries that recognizes the right to bear arms in their constitution. And it must stay that way. Not like, oh, it should. It ought to. It'd be cool if, no, no, no. It must stay that way. America is the number one country in the world for free expression and also gun ownership. I do not believe that that is a coincidence. There are only about 20 countries in which you have free speech, but 
It's not really, you know, good old American made free speech. Brazil has free speech except for hate speech, racism, etc. Mexico has free speech if you ignore the fact that they're notorious for censorship. They have free speech in the Philippines, except you can't say anything that goes against what the law defines as good customs, public order, morality, etc. Which, by the way, means you can't publish books that are against their morals. So rip in the chat for Fifty Shades of Grey. Porn is illegal. And I want to keep going through the list with like examples of why it isn't actually free speech in all these other countries. But it's all the same. Like, look into it for yourself. And you might say, wow, this guy's really triggered because other countries won't protect him from saying hateful things sort of I just like freedom right and it's like I don't think people should say hateful things just like I don't think people should watch porn but there's a difference between what you can do and what you ought to do and I don't want the government deciding what I ought to do when it comes to my personal freedom so long as it doesn't infringe upon the rights of others and for the countries that have free expression without gun ownership good luck and, you know, there are rankings of countries by freedom that I've looked into and they'll publish reports like, oh, America ranks 28th in the world for personal freedom. And then you're like, oh, no, initiate the boogaloo. But then you look at the methodology and they're like, hmm, well, let's see. America has a pretty high murder rate. So we're going to go ahead and knock down their score. Oh, what's that? Sometimes people in America discriminate against others. Yeah, minus some points. Oh, wait, they also have a media that's heavily influenced by politics. Minus 10 from Gryffindor. So the data is corrupted. So take it with a grain of salt. But yeah, shout out James Madison. You know, hashtag Madison 1808. Let's get it trending. And I'm proud to be an American. Where at least I know I'm free. Number two, America is the best because of our scenery. How often do you hear this? People be like, oh, you just have to go to Niagara Falls in Canada or the Amalfi Coast in Italy. Oh, you just must see Bora Bora. You have to see the Great Barrier Reef. Eh, do I? These countries have like one or two little gems, these little like pearls of beauty. Yeah, okay. I'll get a postcard. I'll get a shot glass. Whatever. How about this? Try the Grand Canyon. Blue Ridge Mountains. Maroon Bells, the Garden of the Gods, literally anywhere in Hawaii, Arches National Park. I'll tell you, my mom gets giddy for national parks. You couldn't even comprehend the American beauty that I have seen. I've got the little stamp book. Every time I go to a national park, I'm like, wow, epic, LOL, get owned, Europe. And then I just stamp the book. The Joshua Tree, the Badlands, Thor's Well, Glacier National Park, Death Valley, Death Valley Rally. Remember that SNES game? That went in, but... You know, it's not even a competition. We just have more beauty. We're just better. Well it's, well, it's because you have larger geography and it's more diverse. No, yeah, I agree. That doesn't make us less better. Don't get mad at us because Eiffel Tower souvenirs make up like 18% of your gross domestic product. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Everyone's got beauty, right? We just have more of it. Same thing with our cities. It's like, oh, you have to see Tokyo. You have to go to Singapore and London or Venice. It's, eh. You know, I see you're that. I raise you in New York, a Los Angeles, a San Francisco, Miami, Chicago, DC, Vegas, Seattle. Again, same thing. You guys have some really cool places. We just have a lot more really cool places and we take it for granted. Largely, I think, because no one knows about it, but now you do. So plan a road trip or something. I don't know. Come to Michigan. Downtown Detroit's making a comeback. Don't call it a comeback. We've been here for years. We rocking our peers, putting suckers in fear. That's no, 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 <laughs> no fear. That's not a threat. Homicides are at like a 50 year low. So, you know, it's fine. It's not that dangerous. Just come on by. And I'm proud to be an American. Number three, America is the best because of our entertainment. The United States media and entertainment market is the largest in the world at about 717 billion, expected to grow to about 825 billion by 2023. It occupies one third of the total global market and that includes movies, music, television programs, books, video games, all that fun stuff. There is no movie that competes with The Godfather or Pulp Fiction or Superbad. It just does not exist. There is no album that competes with Thriller or Hotel California or Enem of the State. And obviously there are exceptions just like, you know, there were with the cities and the sites. And there are a lot of excellent French movies like The Untouchables, for example, that Kevin Hart and Brian Cranston inadequately and unnecessarily remade. Um, English rock bands were groundbreaking. I'm just observing the fact that if you took all of American entertainment that everybody around the world loves and consumes like you wouldn't believe like no matter where in the world you go You will see people consuming American entertainment be it movies music TV whatever and then you put it up against any other country It's just like it's not even fair It's not even close not even in the same league to put to put them up against each other would be like putting the US women's national soccer team against a team of boys under 15 years old It just would not be fair to the women that is like, I'm not even kidding that actually happened and they lost like 5-2 but yeah Let's demand equal pay in soccer. Yeah, okay. Equal pay for equal skill, maybe. I'm sorry. This is wrong. We love our women's soccer team because they're American, and that's the whole point of the video. It's just, you know, us Americans, we're just backing into a circle and just yelling at everybody else that we're the best, and then, you know, USA chanting. And I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free. 
Number four, America is the best because of our innovation. I really could just say the word internet and then we move on, but I'll humor you, I've got some more. So shout out to the USA for cell phones, personal computers, laser printers, universal product codes, email, video games, global positioning system, that's your GPS, transistors, 3D printing, refrigerators, light bulbs, airplanes, anti-lock brakes, digital cameras, electronic spreadsheets, Google, Wi-Fi, Facebook, YouTube, iPhones, we could just keep going on and on. But the point is, is that of the most important inventions that shaped the world all the way from the wheel and the axle to the internet, America is overrepresented as a nation. And that is because we have an environment that allows for innovation, which is why people come here to do great things. And if we include in that list all the people that are from other countries originally, but then they come to America to achieve their vision, it grows substantially. And that's just the fun stuff, right? Like that's just the gadgets and the gizmos. Let's talk about medical innovation, which we lead the world in. Cause you know, <laughs> it's funny for these people, you know, they, they point the fingers, they're like, ha ha, you guys don't pay for your citizens healthcare. It's like, yeah, that's probably a lot easier for you guys to do since we're paying for your defense and also coming up with most of the medical advancements at the same time. You know, in four general categories of measuring medical innovation, America leads the world in three, and in some cases more so than all other countries combined. And those categories are basic science, diagnostics, and um, therapeutics. And then in the last category, which is business models, we just don't have the data to determine whether or not we've been more or less innovative than other nations, so it's just up in the air. You know, you look at our Nobel Prize winners compared to the European Union, Switzerland, Canada, and Japan combined. You look at our representation in top medical advancements compared to the European Union, the Switzerland. Uh, we've got nine out of the top 10 and then 20 out of the top 27. You look at our representation in pharmaceutical advancements compared to the European Union and Switzerland. I mean, it's us. And, you know, it could be a lot better, not only the innovation, but the whole system in this country. If we just took a day or two and just deregulated health insurance, removed price controls and quit pouring money into ineffective government programs. Like, it's that simple. Like, if everyone just stopped being dumb, we could just literally fix the problem in an afternoon. It's that simple. And I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free. Number five, America is the best because of our history. And I got to preface this by saying, um, I know that our history is plagued with violence and injustice, brutality. I get that. So if I get excited here, that's not why. It's because when you're threatened or challenged, you're, you know, your sympathetic nervous system activates, your fight or flight kicks in, the adrenaline starts going. So that's why, you know, when politicians talk about taking guns, you see people just instantly just start screaming like, come and take it, alphabet boys. And it's because that's perceived as a threat. Like, understand that if you're someone that is for gun control, it's probably because you don't view the government disarming you as something that's bad or you're not perceiving that to be a threat. But when us gun owners hear that, that is a threat that triggers the fight or flight. Like it literally gets us ready to fight. Like physically, we start secreting adrenaline. We're, you know, so... That's why whenever I talk about U.S. history, people just get really uncomfortable because I start yelling like because it goes from an analysis to an accusation like very quickly. So people people will be like, well, you know, John, you say that people should respect the police. So don't you think that the Bostonians brought the Boston massacre on themselves since the British were only acting in self-defense? And I'm just like, what are you? A, are you a loyalist or something like that's the original McCarthyism? You know, talk about a red scare. It's the red coat scare. But anyways. American history in general is a story about people fleeing persecution in search of freedom, discovering new land, continuing to face persecution, fighting a revolution against the most powerful army in the world, winning, and then going on to become the greatest nation in the world from our innovation to World Wars I and II, the moon landing collapse of the Berlin Wall. I mean, that's basically the outline here. It's a great story. And people will say, oh, well, it wasn't a new country. People already lived here. Yeah. I'm not going to stand alone to apologize for acquiring land the way that virtually every civilization ever acquired land. Native Americans fought with each other over land. America has to apologize for doing it too. And America has to be the only country to apologize. <laughs> I don't know about that one. And by the way, most of the people that bring that up only bring it up because they already hate America and they're just looking for ways to substantiate their preconceived feelings. You know, was it awful? Yes. But the apology you're looking for isn't genuine. You aren't asking for an apology because you think it's awful. If you did, you, your little keyboard warriors would be asking for apologies from France, Germany, Japan, the Middle East, specifically Turkey, Syria, and Iraq, China, Russia, Britain. I mean, literally everyone has done it. That's not to say it's okay. It's just to say that your reasoning for wanting America to apologize for it is not genuine. You aren't actually concerned about morality. You're concerned about hating America. And I'm proud to be an American. Number six, America is the best because of our values. These values we have that built this great country of ours and they are the best. Values like independence, being self-reliance. Americans expect anybody who is able to work to work. 
like it's just such a given within our values. We don't even feel like we have to explain it. But then you've got people like our socialist darling, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who believes that people who are unwilling to work shouldn't have to work, as written in her Green New Deal. Americans also value our privacy. We don't like you on our property. You knock before opening a closed door. Uh, you don't ask about money, religion, or politics. We also expect people to stay out of our personal space in public. We have fences around our houses. This seems normal. Like, this is just normal American culture. In other countries, it's not like this. It's not even like this in most Western countries. And I love this about us because I just know that it's downstream from our history. Like, you know, we've got this colonial spirit of just like, who are you? What do you want? Get the hell off my property. Leave me alone. It's just, it's funny. It's great. But Americans, we're still laid back, you know, we're chilling, we wear casual clothes to school, we don't use formal greetings, we're funny, we're extremely competitive. We compete for jobs, we compete in school, we compete in athletics, we compete for women. Almost everything we do is a competition. And the reason for that is because this country values individualism. He who earns will get. You know, best man for the job. We've got an incredible work ethic. We work 137 hours more per year than the Japanese, 260 more hours per year than the British, and 500 more hours per year than the French on average. So, you know, don't give me the, oh, you Americans are so lazy. Like, nah, uh buddy. We're putting up numbers on the board. Just because we're fat doesn't mean we're lazy. We're actually so good at overeating that we can still work that many hours and remain fat. It's a high energy country. Man, you know, time is money. You have to be efficient. You were five minutes late. Sorry, we replaced you. This country breeds excellence because it requires it. We have a sense of duty to our family, our fellow citizens, to God, to our country. And that's all out of love. We love our country because of the people in it. No one loves the government. The government is dumb. We love everything about this country except the government. It's like, hey, do you like liberty? And then he's like, me? Oh, yeah, I like liberty. It's like, cool, we're friends now. And I won't name drop, but you can probably guess... You know, when I've been in parts of the country that tend to reject this idea of Americanism, everyone's like a total dick. Like you could have a heart attack while crossing an intersection. People would just like walk around you. But in other parts, it's like your car breaks down on the side of the road. Someone pulls up in a truck and they're like, well, let's take a look. And then pretty soon they grab their toolbox. They just fix your car and then they offer you tea after helping you. It's like, sir, I don't understand. You're giving me tea because I allowed you to help me. It's just incredible. The American spirit. Speaking of which. In all of our wars, about 42 million people decided to put their lives on the line for this country and about 650,000 made the ultimate sacrifice. So we value hard work, we value honesty, responsibility, faith, family, generosity. We have done more to help more people than all other nations in the history of the world combined. That alone, if not everything else, makes us the greatest. We value life, liberty, and property, and when something threatens that, that something has made a fatal mistake. And I'm proud to be an American where at least I Number seven, America is the best because of our food. And this is probably the most controversial, but deep down, we all know it's true. Yeah, okay, okay, buddy, maybe once or twice you go to some like franchise Chinese food place so you can feel real cultured, but deep down, you know it's true, and it's fine. You don't have to admit it to me, I don't care. But you know that you couldn't live without apple pie. You couldn't live without corn dogs, buffalo wings, Reuben sandwiches, chili, macaroni and cheese, biscuits and gravy, barbecue, you know, ribs, pulled pork, all that good stuff, s'mores, the BLT sandwich, meatloaf, grilled cheese, cheese steaks. Remember, I drove overnight to Philly just for a cheese steak. It's, it's on the channel, like it's documented. I did this. Tater tots, peanut butter, jelly, cheeseburgers. I mean, I'm salivating at just the thought. People be like, oh, Italian food. It's like, eh. I don't need to go get pickpocketed and, and buy a fake Gucci belt just to get pizza that's slightly better than what I can get in New York. Mexican food, just dip a laxative in hot sauce, same thing. And French food, oh, it's basically, French food is just cheese and bread. I already have that here. It's called the grilled cheese, okay? Like, I don't know, man, American food is just better. I don't know how else to describe it. Like, we don't have to be pretentious and, oh, this has a rich and balsamic aftertaste. No, 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 you take a bite and you think for a second, you're like, hmm, this food is good, and then we move on that you can actually buy. Her bathwater can be purchased on BelleDelphineStore.com. The bottles of bathwater are going for a staggering $30 a bottle, and they come in this little small jar labeled Gamer Girl Bathwater with a little Xbox controller on the top and a message that says, love from Belle Delphine. Number eight, America is the best because we determine our destiny. One could say that we manifest our destiny, but he who says that is short to face backlash, so. But it's true, this is a country where you can make something from nothing. This is the land of opportunity, which is why we have so many innovations, which is why we have an infinite number of success stories, and we have economic mobility. If you are poor in this country, it's pretty easy to figure out how to lift yourself out of that. All you have to do is make good decisions. Other countries, you're pretty much stuck. Here, you finish high school, you get a job, don't have a kid before you're married, and 75% of those people that did those three things make it to the middle class, which in America is between $41,000 and $122,000 a year. That is so much money, not only compared to other countries, but like in this country, you can do so much with a middle class income, and people do every day in this country. And you know, these young liberals, they become obsessed with iPhones and Starbucks, designer clothing, all this, and so then they get upset because they're not gonna be able to afford all of that on a middle class salary. And it's like, you know who doesn't care? 
middle class families that go to work every morning to provide for their families. You think they're losing sleep over some kid complaining? Well, well, billionaires exist. No, they don't care. They don't have the time. When you're young and your parents are providing everything for you, it's real easy to spend your time attending protests, complaining about everything and anything. But when you're independent, when it's time to make the donuts, you don't have time to just whine about things because people, namely yourself, are depending on you. And sure, Obviously, people born into rough circumstances are going to have a harder time making a name for themselves than, you know, people born into wealth or people even born into the middle class. No one denies that, but it's not absolute. There is no 100% guarantee. And we know this because people have defied the odds and become tremendously successful in this country. And it's because we celebrate and reward hard work, entrepreneurship, and innovation in this country. If somebody continues to make good decisions and work hard to stay on the right path in this country, it is basically impossible that they will remain in hardship. And this is known on a global scale, which is why everybody wants to come to America. And I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free. Number nine, America is the best because of our standard of living. We hear an incessant amount of rhetoric in this country about our poor, and there are poor people in this country, but you have to understand, poor is relative. So our poor in comparison to the world's poor live like kings, and our poor compared to the rest of our people are still in pretty good shape. Poor Americans have more living space in their homes than the average non-poor person in Sweden, France, and Germany. 96% of poor people report that their children were never hungry at any time in the last year. The problem that we have is that our politicians like to direct solutions to poverty based on its symptoms instead of its causes. They want to start mopping up the floor even though the bathtub is still running and overflowing. But Here's some fun facts about what it's like to be poor in America. 80% of poor households have air conditioning, but in the 1970s, only 36% of all households had air conditioning. 92% have a microwave, almost three quarters have a car or truck, and about a third have at least two. About two thirds have cable or satellite television, half have a personal computer, one in seven have at least two personal computers, 43% have internet, 40% have automatic dishwashers, more than half have a cell phone, and one third have a widescreen plasma or LCD television. Now, let's talk about nutrition. Examination has shown that your age and gender are actually a larger predictor of nutrient intake than your income status. The nutrient intake of an adult woman in the upper middle class more closely resembles the nutrient intake of a poor woman than that of an upper middle class man, child, or teenager. And the average nutrient consumption of an upper middle income preschooler is virtually identical with that of a poor preschooler, but not with the consumption of adults or older children in the upper middle class or upper middle income. Um, so the standard of living for poor Americans, comparatively speaking, on a global scale is extraordinarily high. They have access to technology that rich Americans didn't have 50 years ago and probably even more recent than that. And as far as the average American standard of living, I mean, we all know, we've all seen it. We live, it's incredible. It's the highest standard of living in human history. We take it for granted. You know, I pull something in my, in my kitchen and water like comes out that I can drink. The bathrooms in and of themselves. It's amazing. I have access to clean water and sanitary disposal of human waste. Those used to be like two of our biggest issues. And then we solved them. Now people are running out of problems to solve. So they're like, oh no, fascism. Oh no, income inequality. It's like, shut up. Go look at your sink for like five minutes and then come back. That'll humble you real quick. Go stare at your sink and then come back and tell me your life is hard. Like really, you have a sink. It can't be that bad. Chill out. Will a woman make the same as a man? And do I get to choose what I do with my body? You're going to make the same if you do as good a job. Number 10, America is the best because we are equal. This doesn't mean that we are truly equal. Some people are smarter, some people are faster, some people are stronger. No two people are equal. It's impossible. You aren't, you're not even equal to yourself from like two weeks ago. Think of everything you've learned in the last two weeks. You would run laps around you from two weeks ago. That guy was a dumbass, but you now, big brain. But in America, we are equal under the law. All men are created equal, cemented in the 14th Amendment with the Equal Protection Clause. The problem is that this isn't enough to achieve equality in the way that the left wants it. The law is there to make sure that I don't screw you over. And so equality under the law just means that we are both equally protected from being screwed over by one another or by other parties. That means that we both have an equal opportunity at achieving our dreams unimpeded by obstacles that others may impose upon us. That doesn't mean that we will have the same result. And the reason that we won't have the same result is because we are likely not equal Equal. In fact, we are very likely unequal. And in a society that allows for free markets and competition, because people are not equal in ability, you are inexorably going to have inequality of outcome. The left hates this. You see this with feminism. Many feminist thinkers have gone on record saying that legal equality isn't going to be enough to achieve total equality between men and women. And they're right. Legal equality leaves both men and women to make their own decisions, and then women choose to work less and at lower paying jobs. And then, oh, no, no, no. Now you have an earnings gap, so then you claim equal pay is an issue. You can't have both equal opportunity and equal outcome. The only way that you could believe that 
is that if you believe human beings are all equal in ability, talent, aptitude, intelligence, whichever metric you'd like. And the beautiful thing about this country is that we allow brilliant people to achieve their potential and then as a result, we all get to reap the benefits of their brilliance. Now we have access to technology and comfort that people 100 years ago couldn't even have comprehended. It's like, yeah, great grandpa, uh, it's a phone, but it's in your pocket. It sends signals to space and back in like a second so we can play eight ball pool. Oh, no, we don't use it to solve problems. We mainly just stalk people who we don't like on social media and send pictures of ourselves with like dog ears and stuff. By the end of this evening, I'm going to be playing for everything that's ever happened. Why not? Why not? Yeah, why not? But regardless of that, the way to continue our prosperity and innovation and spirit is to drastically reduce the size of the government. Government, by definition and design, is there to get in the way. Like, that's literally its purpose. And sure, sometimes the government should be in the way, but when people in the government decide to get in the way, not because it benefits us, but because it benefits them, that's a problem. And it results in a less efficient, less comfortable, less prosperous people. And believe me, this country was not built for the government. The government was built for the country. And the citizens of this country need to seriously consider the degree to which they want the government to um, interfere in their everyday lives, I guess I would say. And, you know, then we move forward from there. We need to snap out of this apathy. Oh, just, oh, well, I guess this law just passed. I guess I just have to do this now. You know what's annoying? The IRS, the IRS is not granted. If people stop thinking of things as like what my enemies want versus what my party wants and then whatever the government decides that we get, do you know how much we could accomplish? Like people are like, oh, grr, I'm mad at the government. Like, buddy, you're too worried about sports ball and Stranger Things season three to fix it. Like there was a bill like two years ago that would have abolished the IRS and income tax. Granted, it was never enacted and it died in Congress, but politics is downstream from culture. My friends, if we got enough people pissed about enough stuff, things would change. The biggest obstacle that we have isn't the government. It's our apathy towards the expansion of government. It's our shoulder shrugs like, oh, eh, I, guess, I guess I just have to pay that tax now. Oh, I guess I can't do that thing anymore. Hmm. Oh, well, no, that's incorrect. We can do something. We know that. That's not the issue. That's the apathy right there. The question isn't whether or not we can do something. The question is whether or not we will do something. And if we don't, America, you know. American prosperity and greatness will just steadily slow down until no one even cares or remembers anymore about the American spirit. So that's what we're working with. Hey guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Leave it a comment right now with your thoughts on why America is the best and subscribe to the channel down there if you haven't done so already. You know, I'd like to see responses to this video because I love America, but I also love that other people love their country. You know, I went, pr I went after French people pretty hard in this video because I have beef with France and that's a long story. But I'd like to see, you know, top 10 reasons why France is the greatest country. It's okay to love your country. I think people should love their country. If you don't love your country, why the hell are you living there? You know, love your country. It's okay to be wrong too. You know, if you think France is the greatest, that's awesome. I'm glad you're wrong, but I'm glad for you, you know? But anyway, thank you so much for watching and may God bless America.